Welcome to part three of the five-part series on spiritual core needs. Part one and part two are on the Trinity YouTube page if you are curious on those as well. So today we are going to be talking about belonging and who wants me. All five of these core needs are taken from the book Five to Thrive by Kathy Cook. There's a link in the description below for more information about her book. In previous lessons, we have talked about needs versus wants. And I wanna start out with this, that all of us were created with a need to be in relationship with God. And we see this in Genesis, we also see this talked about again in Acts, that we are supposed to be in relationship with him. And so in our world today, because of sin has broken this relationship, we have these needs that we are always trying to fill. And so in our world, people fill it with work or relationships or politics or stuff, and they just don't get the core needs that are being met, which can only be met through how God sees us and our relationship with God. And so we're looking at each one of these five core needs and seeing how we can help our children really have security in all five of these needs. So belonging, who wants me? Belonging answers the question of who wants me. Our children ask this from the time they are very little. When they look at you and say, watch me do this or come play with me, they are looking for acceptance. And then as they get older, they look for acceptance from siblings or peers or teachers or other adults. And then as you move into adolescence, they look to their peer group for even more belonging. So how do we as parents help our kids answer that question of who wants me? So we always start with that our kids are made in the image of God and they are to be in relationship with God and one another. We see this in Genesis. We are made in God's image and then shortly after that, about a chapter later, God says, it's not good for man to be alone, and so he makes relationships with other people as well. So we have our relationship with God, which is a vertical relationship, and then our relationship with others, which is that horizontal relationship. So that's really our basis of where we start with. And then it's also good for us to be in relationship with one another. When we're talking about one another here, we're talking about other believers. So scriptures very specifically talks about being in relationship with other people that are believers because they strengthen us and they can spur us on to good deeds and to encourage each other in the path that we walk. So when we're looking at belonging, we really wanna start with that base of that our relationship with God and then our relationship with other believers. And that is the base for developing these answers to these questions of who wants me. Baptism is a great way to start talking to your kids about this belonging piece. As parents, we brought our kids to the waters of holy baptism to be part of God's family. And this is a great way to remind your kids that they have been chosen by God and that they are important. We were all dead in our sins, but God accepts us even though we were lost and that we had no other way to go. To remind our kids that they are a child of God, that they are forgiven, that they are an heir of heaven, we have that confidence in what God's word says and about his promises. And these are things that we can pass on to our kids when we're looking at baptism. So verses like from Ephesians, where he says at the beginning of the world, he chose us to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance to his good pleasure. So that our kids have belonging to God's family, in our immediate family, but then also as the fellow believers, God chose us. And then there's nothing that can separate us from God through those waters of baptism, that we are forgiven and we're rescued from death and the devil. 
You were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. And then with baptism, reminding them of that eternal salvation, that there's nothing that we can do that will take us away from God. That he saved us through the washing and rebirth and renewal of the Holy Spirit, that we might live eternally with him. So we are together forever with our God. In our households and church family is where we can model this to our children. With a firm foundation of who wants our kids and where they belong, our children are able to make better choices about their friends and acquaintances in the secular world. They're able to make good choices about who they are accepted by. So when kids have a strong sense of belonging, that helps them have confidence and it's a security in who they are valued. And so they're all right with making new friends and leaving old ones and that they know where their security belongs. And so if they're not part of a certain peer group, it's easier for them because they have that firm foundation. I'm not saying that they're never gonna have problems with relationships and difficult situations, but a firm, solid foundation in knowing that they're God loves them, their family loves them, and their church family loves them is a solid way for our kids to have that question answered of who wants me. Children do sometimes have that loss of belonging with others. And we see this by kids acting out in appropriate ways at home or a result of this can also be because we're entertained too much in our culture and not in relationship enough, and so we feel this lack of belonging to something. They say that, statistically right now, that a lot of the generations are very lonely, that some of the generations coming through are some of the loneliest generations, and that's because we've lost this sense of relationship and community and belonging. And so when we work on that with our kids, they can be, feel accepted and belonging to something bigger than themselves of what God has called them to do. And then also a sense of longing, a belonging, a loss of sense of belonging also happens when we are distracted instead of present with our kids and with our families. These are just a few things that I just wanna highlight um, as we kind of think through this belonging piece in your homes. In this day and age, I think it's very easy for us to be distracted by all the different media and politics and things that are going on in our world. And some of the best things to do is just be fully present with our families and with our children. Because when we are fully present, our children get to know us and we get to know them. And that's when you really get to understand the beautiful gift that God has created your children to be with all of their gifts and ability that God's given them. And you can point those out to your kids when you're with them and we're not distracted. And so these are just a few things just to remind you of things that I know that you're already taking into consideration as a parent and that you're doing probably a great job with. But just reminders of being fully present, ditching screens, doing things with them when they are awake, and leaving your to-do list for maybe later. Saying yes more often when they ask you, will you push me on the swing, or will you play ball with me, or will you do whatever, fill in the blank. Being present with our kids is a great way to show them that they belong. When we explore together, when we laugh together, when we have joy of doing real meaningful things together, these are ways that make our kids feel that they belong in our families and belong in our church families as a, as a bigger and broader community. When we have these things, then when it's, things go hard and things are rough, like in times like now, it makes them easier to bear and it's makes the bad days easier because we know and we have this sense of belonging and security in the church family and our immediate families that we have.
So let's look at the everyday as we do with all of these, looking at our head, our heart, and our hands. So what are some practical things that you can do to help your kids feel that they belong in your family and in your um, household as a whole? So let's look at practice of spiritual disciplines. As always, we pray for our kids and we read scripture together. These are core spiritual disciplines that we want to keep doing in our families. Have our kids hear the word of God and know that we're praying for them. Celebrate baptism birthdays. Kids love celebrating their birthdays. They get presents and it's a big deal. Let's celebrate our kids' baptism birthdays too. They might be, they're gonna be different than our birthday celebrations, but it is really important to celebrate baptism birthdays and remind our kids that they are a chosen child of God. Get that candle out, light it, let them blow it out. Maybe you have a video of when they are baptized Remind them of God's unconditional love for them and that he has called them to be in his family. Teaching conflict resolution, which I know if you have other siblings in the house, this is a constant thing, but teaching conflict resolution to your kids of how they deal with conflict when we have relationships. Teaching forgiveness in our homes of apologizing and say that I'm sorry and I forgive you teaching them how to make friends and then also how to end friendships when the time comes for that as well. Teaching how to have conversations with people, what questions to ask and how to continue on a conversation. These are things that we teach our kids at the dinner table or when we're walking to the park with them or when we're in different situations. Teaching these practical life skills um, as spiritual disciplines with our kids help them to develop that sense of belonging in our homes, but then also as they go out into the secular world as well. And then focusing on relationships, a few ideas here. Make time for families and friends. Treating other people as God sees them. So whether it's another driver on the road or it's the next door neighbor, treating them as God calls us to treat others and that we love them and that we respect them and that we care for other people. Explaining the use of social media as an addition to -to face-to-face relationships. Too many teens decide that they're going to break up with somebody via text or talk about somebody on a social media platform and not realizing that those are actually relationships. And so that social media is an addition to the relationships we have, not in replace of the relationships that we have. And so really guiding our kids on that as well. And then importantly, spending undistracted family time, putting away devices, putting away screens, and practicing these spiritual disciplines by unplugging the screen time that we have. And then last, the spiritual conversations that we have with our kids. So, as we talked about before, talking about God's unconditional love for them, talking about that baptism piece, how they've chosen us, he's chosen us as his child. Using the book of Proverbs to teach about friendship. The whole book of Proverbs is a book that is written as an advice book to a young man. And there are lots of verses in there about friendships and how to deal with friendships. And I think it's hard in this time really to deal with some of those friendship pieces when our kids feel isolated from their school friends and from their neighbor friends and other people. So this is a really great time to talk about belonging and relationships and um, those discussions with your families in this kind of time of really change and, and different. And so... It's a great time to talk about belonging and friends with your kids. Talking with your kids about what makes good friends and what doesn't make good friends. Discussing who they look up to and why they look up to those people. And then discussing why they pick the friends that they pick and what qualities do they really like about those friends or not like about those friends. And so typically kids will be in a peer group 
of things, of people that are like the same things they do. So for instance, if they like to play hockey, they're with, they have hockey friends, or if they have volleyball, they do volleyball friends, or if they're in choir, they're choir friends, or band, they're band friends. And so talking to our kids about just liking things, is that what makes good friends, or is it more than that? And so kind of taking those discussions and those spiritual conversations to a different level with your kids. With any of this, with Bible study, with all the different things that I mention or talk about, these are just tools for you to take as a parent and to use or not use. Not everything works the same for every family. Some of your kids may not really struggle with belonging where others struggle immensely with belonging. And so figuring out what works for your kids and what works for your family is going to be different for everybody. Just kind of recap um, and looking at this, Our households and our church family is where we can model who wants me, that belonging piece to our children. When our kids have a firm foundation in what God says about them, that he's adopted them through the waters of baptism, a family that loves and cares for them, and a fellowship of believers who is behind them as well, they are able to make better choices about their friends and acquaintances in the secular world. They're able to choose and make good choices on what's good behavior and what's bad behavior because they have a sense of belonging of who wants them and who cares for them. And so this is a really important need that our children have and it's a really important relationship piece that God has given us and that he wants us to have. Next week, we are going to talk about number four, which is purpose. Why am I alive? And we'll discuss that a little bit more. And then the last one will be on competence of what do I do well. And again, all five of these core needs come from Kathy Cook's book, Five to Thrive, if you're interested in more information. Have a great week, and we'll talk to you later.